voice of God answered him. Uh, those in Acts, uh, let's just in, in, in the book of Acts, who are celebrating this very day when fire came down from heaven, when God spoke out of the mountain. Come on. And so now we know what that celebration must have been like. And crowds of people were milling around the courtyard in A.D. 33. There were Jews from everywhere. Uh, it had only been seven weeks since Jesus the Messiah had been crucified. Jesus of Nazareth. Many believed that he was Christ the Messiah. And rumors were going around that he had risen from the dead. More than 500 people had seen Jesus alive at one time. And his disciples and his most committed followers, all right, had spent some days in prayer waiting for the promise of the Father. That day, about 120 had gathered in an area of the temple known as Solomon's Porch. And as they, as they were praying, this is what happens. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. It says this, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enable them. Let me tell you that speaking in other tongues is a biblical phenomenon. All right. And just like the fire and smoke on Mount Sinai witnessed by the children of Israel when, when God gave the law, the 120, they also witnessed the fire fall from heaven. Amen. They also witnessed God descend. And just like as Moses spoke and the voice of God answered him, uh, the, the 120 began to speak in other tongues and they also had a message for those who gathered around them because the people heard them in their own language glorifying God and magnifying God. Come on. Somebody tell your neighbor, our God is a supernatural God. He always has been and always will be. Well, the people gathered together. And they saw all of this going on. They heard the wind. They saw the fire. They came running and, and, and many people uh, gathered around. Some of them were perplexed. They did not know what was going on. And of course, Peter stood up and he explained what was happening and, uh, and he preached the first gospel message. Acts 2.38 says, he said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And he continued to warn them and call them to an action. They came down. They, 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 they gave their lives to Jesus Christ. They publicly showed that by being baptized in water. And God began a tremendous wave of his power. How many of you believe that we still need the power of God in this day and age? Come on. How many of you still need believe that we need the supernatural power of God in our ministry and in our churches? The chapters that follow in the book of Acts are extremely exciting. If you've never read the book of Acts, I encourage you to do it, all right? Demons were cast out. Visions were seen. People supernaturally spoke in tongues. People turned to God and away from their sins. Sorcerers who had made their living from the black arts burned their paraphernalia. Miracles occurred. Lives were transformed. There was power in the church. And even though there was opposition, there was nothing that could stop that early church. Why? Because they had the power of the Holy Spirit in their lives. And just a few chapters later, later that even the enemies of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ had this testimony. They said these people that have turned the world upside down, they have came here as well. I'm just here today to tell you that if you want to turn the world upside down, you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. And I just believe that God wants to visit his church. Now that's just kind of an introduction, all right, to these supernatural events. We're going to go deeper as the weeks progress. But I don't apologize for Pentecost, first and foremost, because it's biblical. The second thing I want to say, I will not apologize for Pentecost because it is effective. I said it's effective. The most effective churches and ministries in the world 
are Pentecostal churches. You know, we have some great mega churches in our city, but they're just little baby churches compared to a couple of churches in the world. Yoido Full Gospel Church in Seoul, Korea has just uh, 830,000 members. Somebody say, wow. <laughs> How about Jarabichi Methodist Pentecostal Church in Santiago, Chile with 350,000 members? Some of you may remember Pastor David Mohan who's preached on this very platform. He, he's in New Life Church in Chennai, India. And he, has, he is currently trying to build the largest auditorium for, in, in, in the world for a church that will seat over 55,000 people. Come on, somebody. Give the Lord a hand of praise. But I'm not going to today just to lift up a super mega churches like that to say that's proof of the power of the Holy Spirit. Because let me tell you something, the Holy Spirit is not limited or relegated to just super mega churches like, like Yoido Full Gospel Church. Let me tell you, I've been through the mission field. I lived as a missionary. I can tell you of little tiny places out in the way of Columbia where they met underneath the thatch roof where they, oh, they didn't have any musicians. All they had was a little chicka, 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 chicka thing and that they, they would start worshiping the Lord. But let me tell you something. They had something that a lot of churches are missing. They had the power and the anointing of the Spirit of the living God. And I'm going to tell you something. All around the world, underneath trees in Africa, hidden in little house churches in China all over the world in Asia and South America God is baptizing people in the Holy Spirit it's not about a mega church my friend it's about the power of the living God it's about the anointing of the Spirit it's about calling people into a place where they can be effective for service to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and I for one don't want to spend a single day of my life trying Trying to do the ministry on my own. I'm here to tell you I need his power. I need his touch. And I need the spirit of the living God in my life. Come on somebody give the Lord a hand of praise. It's effective. This week towards the end of the week. I thought I had an abscess tooth. I don't. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Come on. Amen. When I ran down to see my dentist down there in Mexico. That's right, I'm 5, 30 seconds Mexican, about to be 6, 30 seconds Mexican. 6 out of 32 of my teeth will be from Mexico. Come on. Si, sí, senor. But my dentist is also a, a spirit-filled man. And while we were there, he told us a little bit about his story. You see, 20 years ago, he was just a dentist working on the streets of Progreso, Mexico, a guy from a very traditional type of a religious background, and uh, he was a heavy metal fan, listened to heavy metal every day, all day long. And uh, one day someone walked into his office and started telling his wife about Jesus, and he was listening from the back room, and he got interested in what she was saying, and he decided to get a Bible and read it for himself, and, and pretty soon he found Jesus, amen? He found Christ, and he accepted Jesus Christ into his life and, and, and a few months later as he read through the Bible and he gained more knowledge he was invited to a church they were preaching about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and he said okay well I, I, I guess if I, I really want that and so he went down to the front and somehow he said my wife got pushed over to this side and he got pushed over to that side and he said, they said, just raise your hands and pray. He said, I only knew one prayer. That was our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy and so he said, I started to just pray that prayer over and over and over. He was just being obedient, hello? He was just being obedient to the Lord. And he told about how all of a sudden in the middle of that prayer, he felt something come on him. He felt a power. He felt an anointing. He felt the touch of God. And he began to speak in other tongues. And he wound up being on the floor speaking in another language meanwhile his wife is way over here on this side of the church and the same thing happens to her when he finally kind of gains his senses and wake looks around 
It's only three people in the room, he, his wife, and the pastor. <laughs> they get up. They get in the car. They don't say anything to each other. All the way home, they don't say a single thing. Get in the house. Get ready for bed. But as soon as they got into the bed, he said, I looked this way, and she looked at me, and they said, what was that? That was probably 18 years ago. Some of you remember him. How many of you remember my dentist? He told that story here already. I probably didn't tell it just right. But let me tell you something. Guess what? The Lord is raising him up. Amen? He's got now, uh, in January of this year, he opened his uh, church. They have 30 people there that are come, come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? They're currently meeting in his house. Isn't God good? You see, that's the power of Pentecost. It's effective in the lives of those who trust the Lord oh man I got more luggage I can get through the door hallelujah I will not apologize for Pentecost number three not only is it biblical not only is it effective but I cannot apologize for Pentecost because I'm from a Pentecostal family Pentecost is about family. You may not realize it, but it is. Because the scripture says, I'm just going to preach the word, okay? How many be all right if I just preach the Bible, all right? Here's what the word says in Joel chapter 2. It says, I will pour out of my spirit on all people. And it goes on to say, your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. How many say that would be all right with me? The scripture goes on in Acts chapter 2 and verse 39. It says, this promise is unto you and to your children oh come on i'm telling you that it's about family as well and i'll tell you i have seen and we have many stories of the miraculous in our family miraculous provision miraculous healing miraculous moments in our family and i credit that not to myself not even to my wife, although she's a wonderful woman of God. I credit that for me, I credit to my grandmother on my mom's side and my grandfather and grandmother on my dad's side, all right? Both sets of my grandparents were Pentecostal people who believed in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I, I, my, my, my grandmother was a young woman when she received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they were having a tent meeting. And interestingly enough, the other uh, people in town didn't like that happening very much. And so one night they came as they were worshiping the Lord and preaching in that tent, and they cut down all the ropes all at once, and so the tent fell on them. And as they came crawling out from underneath the tent, they pelted them with tomatoes. That really happened to my grandmother. Uh, I believe it was up in Minnesota that happened. But let me tell you something. Didn't stop my grandmother. My grandmother was a believer in the Bible and she was used in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. She was a prayer warrior. And interestingly enough, uh, God took her family and began to bless them and began to call them to do certain things. Two out of four of her children had been in ministry. And when she, and at, at this moment among her grandchildren, you have my cousin Randy, okay, who was a missionary to China, then Japan currently pastoring in Providence, Rhode Island. You have his brother, Phil, also my cousin, who's been an associate pastor and a pastor in Illinois. My cousin, John Paul, by the way, that's from another family who's an Assembly of God pastor. My sister, Linda, y'all met her a few weeks ago. She was just here, her and her husband, Bruce, pastor up in Appleton, Wisconsin. You have myself, who's been a missionary to Columbia, pastoring here. My brother, David, who's a missionary to Lithuania and touching other parts of the world. Wow, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? On the other side of the family, on my dad's side, you have my grandmother and grandmother. My grandfather is very sick. I don't have a, a time to tell the whole story today. But they were attending a church that said this, that miracles had passed away. God doesn't heal anymore. But you know what? There was a preacher who believed the Bible got on the radio. In those days, they listened to the radio. My grandfather could not work. There was not enough food in the house. And they were listening to the radio as Brother Cadwater, that was his name, was preaching on the radio. Let me tell you something to make a long story short. God raised up my grandfather from a sick bed. And then later on, my grandfather said, listen, he said, I just want this thing called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He pulled his car off to the side of the road one day and he 
said, I'm not moving this car until the Lord baptizes me in the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody.